is Filippo. Maybe you meet me before. I'm the CEO of Prima Luce Lab. And instead of talking to you about the product, we can see there and talk about that. I would like to introduce you my friend and tech guy, the daytime and astrophotographer by night, Tom Bramwell, that will introduce you to the advantages of use of all the product for his passion, our passion to astrophotography. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Tom Bramwell, and uh, I'm from San Jose, California. And during the day, I am a uh, worker at a uh, fruit-themed tech company in uh, Cupertino, California. And uh, when I'm not working or out with my telescope, my friends and family know me as the hummingbird guy. Uh, but when I'm out doing astrophotography, my time is precious, and I think it should be fun. So when I first started, I identified some struggles uh, that I had. And um, I noticed that uh, I was having trouble flipping at the meridian. Uh, I was having issues with periodic error. My gear was extremely heavy. Uh, I was challenged with horizons in my backyard. I could see very little of the sky. Uh, there were way too many cables and complex, way too much complexity. And I decided to do astrophotography on the Mac, uh, which really limited uh, compatibility with my hardware. And when I first started out, I had a couple of mounts uh, from Celestron. Uh, the periodic error and the weight uh, of the gear were issues for me. And when I first started out doing astrophotography in my backyard, uh, you could see that I had a very limited view of the sky. Uh, I was literally between a giant rock and a hard place and the meridian runs right through the middle. So I would only get a couple of images, have to flip, and then a couple of images and I was done for the night. So it was very frustrating. So uh, issue number one for me was the meridian. So after doing some research, uh, I found a mount from Avalon Instruments that did not flip at the meridian and it could handle the weight of all my gear. And that mount was the M1. And it's belt driven on both axes. Uh, so there's very, very little periodic error. There's no backlash on this mount. Um, after all my research, it was obvious this was the way to go. And after getting the mount, it was so good. I had to buy the even smaller uh, version uh, for portability, the M0. It's every bit as good as the Uno. And if you look at the weight, uh, if each of those little boxes is five pounds, my original gear was uh, just the mount alone and counterweight was about 150 pounds and I was wrecking my back with it. And now we're at 26 and a half pounds just for the mount. And uh, uh, the weight was just absolutely incredible and it allowed me to get my gear uh, further out of, the, out of the backyard. So uh, the tracking on the Avalon uh, with guiding, extremely low periodic error. Uh, 0.18, mind-blowing. But the mount is not infallible. It's not earthquake-proof. I do live on top of the Calaveras Fault, so uh, I've imaged through a few earthquakes. <sighs> but the mount did correct many issues for me. Uh, so with the weight being taken care of, I could actually venture out from my backyard and work on my horizons issue. So I started to go up to the county park by my house. And uh, the place I first started to shoot away from home is called Grant Ranch Park. It's about 25 minutes from my home. And um, I loved going up there. I would go early uh, before sunset and take pictures of all the wildlife. Uh, I'm kind of a nature guy, so it was, it was great for me. Uh, but being outside in nature did present some new problems that I didn't have in my backyard. Um, not all the wildlife out there was astronomer friendly. Uh, we had issues with wild pigs. I got packed up on by coyotes. Uh, <laughs> but this is an overhead view of Grant Ranch Park where I would shoot and I would park 
right about in here and have to walk my gear down a path uh, about 60 yards uh, where I would set it up. And then when the sun would go down, uh, the animals would start to come out. And this is where I had to encounter every single one of those creatures and uh, made me very, very uncomfortable. So we have to add one problem to the list. Um, but uh, being that as it may, I uh, increased my productivity extremely, but I did have these issues that I still wanted to solve. So being able to get longer exposures with more horizon, um, the results were instantly clear. Uh, my, my images were much more contrasty, signal to noise, much, much better. I even managed to win an APOD, amateur APOD, uh, for my shot of the North American Nebula. So going back to those original problems and carrying them forward, uh, I just kind of had to live with them for several months. But then fast forward to AIC in my hometown of San Jose, California. Uh, Avalon Instruments uh, was coming to the show and I offered up the use of my gear uh, to them so they wouldn't have to bring it from Italy. The gear was already in town, so they took me up on the offer. Uh, and they were going to be traveling with a new company to the show from uh, Italy called Prima Luce Lab. And they were going to offer up a new piece of gear uh, that seemed to address a lot of my issues. So at the show, I got to meet the president of the company, Filippo. And he was telling me about this new product. And as he was rattling off the features, they registered in my head that this thing could be the cure to my issues. And that new product was the Eagle. So thinking about my issues, cables, complexity, and compatibility, and wildlife. And it did address those issues, and I'll tell you how. So first, it runs Windows 10. Uh, so that means I have full driver support for any device I own or ever hope to own. There's 12 volt power out ports, so you can power your cameras, your mounts, your rotators, focusers, anything with a 12 volt power. There's four USB 2 ports that you can reset within the UI if you have a stuck device. There's four high speed USB 3 ports, there's two per side. And there are three 12 volt variable power out ports, so you can hook up your dew heater directly to the Eagle without the need of a controller. And this is my killer feature the dual Wi Fi networks and Ethernet ports, so you can operate the, the Eagle completely remotely. Uh, but the Wi Fi networks allow me to cut the cord. So here's an example of the Eagle UI when you first log into the Eagle. This is what you're presented with. Over here is where you can power cycle your devices if you need to. Uh, you don't have to go out and physically touch your camera anymore. You can just, with a click, power off, power on. Or reset your USB ports the same way. And the cable issue that I had before, if you add up all the cabling that I used to have to have 15 foot USB cables to snake their way all the way through the mount down to a hub on the ground, same amount of cable for power down to a battery. It all adds up. And if you add up just roughly the, the cable length before and after, you're looking at over 250 feet versus less than 50 feet. But what would that amount of cable look like if you stretched it end to end? Well, the largest passenger aircraft in the world is the Airbus 380. And it's about 262 feet wide while a Cessna is about 36 feet wide. Or if you're more into sports, that's the difference between a three-quart shot and a three-point shot. <laughs> uh, so the Eagle did solve those problems, and it was delicious. But what other tasty treats does Prima Luce Lab offer from Italy? Well, they have some accessories that take uh, automation even further. They have the Echo and the Sesto Senso. The Sesto Senso is a bolt-on robotic focus motor and uh, very, very predictable focus curves. It has a great uh, uh, UI 
uh, where uh, you can perform an easy calibration. Uh, there's acceleration and deceleration settings for the motor. You can adjust the power. So it's great for like friction focusers where you can do a steady ramp instead of spinning it. And the Echo is an automatic environmental control module that mounts to your telescope that is perpetually watching the temperature and humidity and calculating the dew point. So you can tell exactly when your scope is going to fog up and it will automatically apply heat uh, to the dew band to prevent that from happening. And here's a quick video of my setup. And before, uh, when I would go remotely, it would take me about an hour uh, to get everything set up and ready. And now I can do it in less than 20 minutes. So here's me setting up in my backyard, placing the Amuno on the mount. And here's the eagle. And you'll see, <laughs> there's Filippo. But you'll see that I use the eagle here as a counterweight. And it's actually the only counterweight that I need for a fairly large OTA on top. So the eagle here for me has more than one purpose. And when you're carrying all this stuff out to the field, anything that does with the work of more than one role, it's beautiful. There's the echo. It rides up on top of the telescope with a, a clear view of the ambient air. And the Sesto Senso bolted onto my moonlight focuser. Install the camera, attach my wiring bus, attach the dew heater to the side of the Eagle. No controller. One power cable to my battery. Check the balance and I'm done. One power cable to the ground and you are ready to operate this device from any portable electronic you have, like the, your iPhone, your, your Android uh, phone or tablet, uh, any, any Mac or PC laptop uh, that can run a Windows remote desktop, connect to this. So uh, being able to have a quicker setup with less gear, uh, I ventured further away from home with uh, less uh, uh, horizon issues, less light pollution issues and uh, better seeing. So the quality of my image went up just by being more portable. So I would shoot at Fremont Peak, which is about an hour and a half south of my house. Uh, here you can see that I use the Eagle as a saddle. Uh, it's rigid enough that you can uh, mount your telescope directly to it and not have to worry about any flexure issues whatsoever. And here again, I'm using it as a counterweight which just saves me from having to carry so much less gear out. Venturing even further away from home and higher up in altitude, I got access to a wonderful uh, location called Choose Ridge. It's over 5,000 feet in elevation. Uh, it can be pretty punishing out there. Uh, so not having to worry about your gear, but worry about your safety uh, is, is a great thing. And so being wireless now, I'm no longer chained to that telescope. I can hide out in the safety of my Jeep where it's warm and comfy and I can watch movies and not have to worry about wildlife killing me. <laughs> my family appreciates that too. So now that I'm not limited to 60 second or 120 second exposures, uh, things like the Dumbbell Nebula become much richer with 20, 30 minute exposures. Horsehead Nebula before, Horsehead Nebula after richer exposures. I even managed to win a stellar view shot of the week with my SVQ100 of uh, M81 and M82. Uh, shot this uh, image up at Choose Ridge. Uh, heart Nebula bicolor, hydrogen and oxygen shot from my backyard, which before I could never get results like this from my backyard. The Soul Nebula shot this up at Choose Ridge, also a bicolor. And our favorite galactic neighbor, the Andromeda Galaxy, shot also up at Choose Ridge. And that's it. This is where you can find me online if you have any questions. Thanks for your time. Yeah.